Hello, and welcome to my second lecture in organic chemistry, organic nomenclature of the alkanes under the Alberta Chemistry 30 curriculum. Um, as we said, there are a tremendous number of organic compounds. Um, as a result, there are strict rules surrounding the nomenclature uh, of, the, of these uh, materials. Generally, the recipe includes a prefix, followed by a root, followed by a suffix. The prefix typically describes uh, substitutions or attachments onto the longest chain of the organic compound. The root describes that longest chain and gives a, a name to it depending on the number of carbons in the chain. The suffix describes the homologous series uh, that the molecule belongs to, whether it's an alkane, an alcohol, or an ester, uh, and the like. For example, the suffix for the alkanes is the ane suffix. The first step in naming a hydrocarbon then is to find the root and determine the longest continuous chain of carbon to carbon bonding. Um, if you consider an unsaturated hydrocarbon such as an alkene or an alkyne, and we'll do that in a subsequent lecture, we look for the longest chain of carbon to carbon bonding that includes that unsaturated site. Um, the root of the name then comes from the number of carbons found in this longest chain. Um, and here's the list of the, the, ten, uh, the, the 10 examples you're responsible for. You're responsible for uh, um, alkanes that are anywhere from 1 to 10 carbons long. So if the alkane's longest chain has got 3 carbons in it, it's going to be a probe. If it's got 8 carbons in it, it's going to be an oct. The suffix uh, identifies the homologous series upon which the, um, uh, the compound exists. And again, the alkanes are the anes, the alkenes are the enes, the alcohols are the oles, and so on. And we'll do the alkanes today, but we'll do the other series in subsequent lectures. And again, prefixes identify any attachments to the parent chain of the hydrocarbon. Um, quite often, there can be uncertainty as to where they're located along that longest chain. Because of that, we have to come up with a numbering system that clearly identifies where they're located. Um, we only assign numbers if necessary, and we count the longest chain from the end closest to the attachment. If there's a tie, uh, the tie is assigned alphabetically. Um, the longest chain for unsaturated hydrocarbons, like alkenes and al alkynes, is numbered from the end closest to the unsaturated site, not closest to the attachments. And should there be a tie, the sum of all attachments should be a minimum. Side chains are given a name that's independent of the name of the longest chain. Their names are quite similar, though. If you have a side chain with a single carbon in it, that's a methyl group. If you have a side chain with six carbons in it, that's a hexyl group. You'll notice these prefixes are very similar to the prefixes uh, of, the, of the root. So with that having been covered, then let's look at some examples, and then I'll refer you to your homework uh, assigned by your teacher in this area. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, there's, there's a little bit more way of theoretical background. The name of all side chains are added alphabetically to the root and to the suffix to make the final compound name. If there's more than one side attachment, say there's more than one methyl or more than one ethyl group, then we would employ a prefix to a prefix. It might be dimethyl, it might be triethyl, depending on the number of side chains that are equivalent. And this prefix to the prefix does not factor into the alphabetic naming scheme that we mentioned above. Cyclic compounds also have their own prefix. We refer to them as cyclic compounds. On some occasions, if we have a cyclic compound, it might have more than one attachment. And then we have to apply numbers to that ring structure. We number cyclic structures alphabetically, giving the lowest total number possible to these side chains. And if need be, we will employ prefixes to prefixes like di and tri and the like. So again, now we're going to look at some examples. And the first thing I go to then is the root. So the root here is hex. In fact, it's hexane. So whatever else this is, we're going to see a longest chain that's six carbons long, 
and there'll be a, an attachment to it of a one carbon side chain. And that attachment will, will be located on the second carbon in the longest chain. And that's what we see here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's our hexane. And we have a methyl group attached to the second carbon. I count from the left. If I count it from the right, it would make this 5-methylhexane. 2 is smaller than 5, so we count from the left. Here's a slightly different molecule. The longest chain here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this is heptane. There are two attachments. Each is an individual carbon, so each is a methyl group. And they're attached to the second carbon and the third carbon in the longest chain. We pull that all together, this becomes 2,3-dimethylheptane. Here's a similar molecule, 2,2-dimethylpentane. And again, I go straight to the root. I need the longest chain with five carbons in it. And then at the second carbon in that chain, I need two single carbon attachments coming off the side. And that's what you see here. One, two, three, four, five. So there's the pentane. And here's our first methyl on the second carbon, and here's our second methyl on the second carbon. So this diagram is interesting for another reason. There's actually a mistake in it. And I don't think I've ever seen a textbook that doesn't have this exact same mistake. And it's right here at this carbon. Excuse me. Um, this carbon is bonded to one, two, three, four nearest neighbor carbons, um, which makes sense. Each carbon is bonded to four uh, other atoms. But then there's a hydrogen here, and that purports to make a fifth bond with this carbon. And that, that's not possible. This hydrogen should not be here. Um, I, in the end of the day, I, I'm as bad as all the rest in terms of making this particular mistake. Here's a simpler example. One, two, three, four. This is a straight chain alkane with four carbons in it, making this butane. 2-methylpentane. Again, we're looking at a 5-carbon chain with a single carbon side chain coming off of the second carbon. But I believe we're dealing with line diagrams here. Yes, line diagrams. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there's the pentane. And there's the methyl group coming off on the second carbon. 5-ethyl-2,3-dimethylheptane. Heptane, meaning a 7-carbon uh, parent chain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's our heptane. It's the jagged line through the middle of the molecule. There's our two methyl, and there's our three methyl. One, two, three, four, five. And there's our five ethyl. Ethyl, of course, has got two carbons in it, and it's attached to the fifth, fifth carbon in the longest chain. Five ethyl, three, three dimethyl heptane. It's a similar molecule. And again, here's the heptane. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there's our 3,3-methyl, three, three and there's our 5-ethyl. You'll notice that ethyl is before methyl because uh, in the name, because E is before M in the alphabet. And the same goes for the, the second molecule above. Ethyl cyclopentane. Cyclopentane will be a ring structure with five carbons in it. And ethyl is a, is a side chain with two carbons uh, on the side chain. So here it is. There's our pentane. And there's our ethyl, one carbon, two carbons. There's no number required here. And this goes back to something I said previously. You only use numbers if need be. In this case, wherever I put this ethyl, um, we'll have the, the identical molecule. So no numbering required because no matter where it's attached to, um, you're going to be dealing with the same compound. 2,4-dimethylhexane. So hexane, we're going to be looking at a six-carbon chain, and it's going to have two attachments, each has got a single carbon on it. And there we see it here. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's a hexane, there's the side chain on the second carbon, and there's a side chain on the fourth carbon. Simple hexane. So we'll, we should see a jagged line here with six carbons in it. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's our hexane. A little simpler example. Two, three, dimethylbutane. But, the root tells me there's gonna be four carbons in the parent chain. One, two, three, four. So there's the parent chain there. Two, three, dimethyl. So here's a methyl attached to the second carbon, and here's a methyl attached to the third carbon. And in fact, it doesn't matter whether you count this left to right or right to left. This is two, three, dimethylbutane in either direction. Two, two, dimethylbutane. This will be a 
Excuse me, this will be a similar molecule. We see the butane, one, two, three, four. But you see two methyl groups both coming off the second carbon in that longest chain. I think I have four more questions, and then I'll, I'll close up my lecture for the day. 2,5-dimethylheptane. So heptane, I should see a longest chain with seven carbons in it. And I think if I inspect this, I need to count clockwise. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so there's the heptane. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there's two five dimethyl. So there's a methyl group on the second carbon in the chain, three, four, five, and there's a methyl group in the fifth carbon in the chain, which gives us our completed name. It's a condensed structural diagram for an alkane. Let's see if we can find the longest chain. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There it is there. So whatever else this is, this is a decane represented by these 10 carbon atoms. Here's a side chain, which is a methyl group. And here's a side chain, which is a methyl group. And they're both attached to this fifth, fifth carbon. Alphabetically, then, this will be 5-ethyl, 5-methyl decane. 5-ethyl, 5-methyl decane. Here's another elaborate one. Let's see if we can find the longest chain here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is an octane molecule. Counting from the left, this methyl is attached at the third carbon. Um, counting from the right, this ethyl is attached at the fourth carbon. So we properly count this from the left. And it becomes 5-ethyl, 3-methyl, octane. And again, Ethyl before methyl because E before M in the alphabet. Here's sort of a really complicated one. Let's see if we can figure it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is a nonane. There's an ethyl group attached here, and there's a methyl group attached here. The ethyl group is attached at the fourth carbon from the top left. The methyl group is attached to the fourth carbon from the bottom right. Ties go to the alphabet. So this is in fact 4 ethyl. 6-methyl nonane. And again, E before M alphabetically. So that's the end of my lecture. Um, I'll see you next week when I talk about uh, alkenes, alkynes, and cyclic structures, together with their nomenclature. And I hope you found that uh, this lecture of some value. Thank you.